Hi, I'm Casey Gray, broadcasting from the beautiful city of Waterdeep, and this is D&D Expertise, Episode 10. You can find plenty of videos on YouTube that will tell you that the rules for the dual-wielding feat are trash. This is one of them. That feat was written before the first copy of 5e ever found its way into players' hands, and it shows. No dungeon master actually makes you draw two weapons separately, it would be lame if they did, and a plus one to AC is nice, but at the end of the day, it's just a 5% damage reduction. Picking this feat is the opposite of an optimized character, and is virtually guaranteed to be flat out worse than a plus two to dexterity. This is exactly why it can be worth picking, though it depends entirely on the person running the game. By picking it, you're essentially waving a big flag that signals, I'm not trying to be efficient or do the most damage, I just think fighting with two axes or something sounds like a neat character concept. A good DM wants every player to have fun and be able to contribute, but is always a little worried about things that might mechanically break the game. They're going to be cautious about exactly what magic items they let a coffee-chugging Sorlock get their hands on, but when you know the feat sucks and you pick it anyway, they feel a lot less concerned about whether or not to let you acquire that pair of plus three weapons with the Flame Tongue enchant. It's like a power gaming Uno Reverse. Instead of keeping your character from being too OP, the DM is now worried about you being underpowered, and will work with you to find ways of empowering your character concept, because keeping your power level within reason now means boosts instead of obstacles. If the DM doesn't notice or doesn't care, then you're screwed, because in a vacuum the dual wielding feat just sucks. 